Do you suffer from clinical depression? Allow me to solve all of your fucking problems. Savory meat pie. First of all, it's a bit of a project, so it'll keep your mind off suicide. Also, pie is a pretty good way to combat loneliness. I mean, look at these. This is a dish that says, I'm a good choice of mate. Let's get together and make a baby and just try to live authentic lives and find happiness together despite the overwhelming psychopathic absurdity of the world in which we exist. Okay. Let's get started by spatchcocking a duck, which is a fancy way of saying that we're going to use some big scissors to cut the spine out, and then we're going to do a bit more trimming so the whole bird lays flat during roasting. This is a lovingly raised sweetwater duck that I got from a local farm here on beautiful Vancouver Island, but you could easily use a less fancy bird such as this utility duck. A utility duck is a duck that for some reason got nicked or bruised during butchering, so it doesn't look perfect enough to sell to someone who, say, plans to bring an entire roasted bird out to the table as a showpiece. So the butcher just cuts off the offending limb and sells it as a utility bird to crazy cooking freaks like me who take it home and break it down and bake it into pies and stuff. Anyway, I digress. Cut off the spine with the scissors and then make a cut in the center of the underside of the breast bones and then crack the breasts open like a book so the bird lays flat. Run your knife along the rib cage to separate it from the body before snipping off each side across the bottom. If there's a bone here under the wing, make a cut underneath and then snip it off with the scissors. Okay, looks like it's laying flat. Turn it over. Let's talk about salt for a second. I salted this duck liberally two days ago, and it's been dry brining in the fridge while the salt works its magic, seasoning the meat from the inside through the processes of osmosis and diffusion. Now that's done, I'm still going to sprinkle a little salt on the outside before I throw this duck in the oven because I want the outside of the skin to come out a little salty as well when it crisps up. Also, it's a good habit to season a little bit at every step instead of all at the beginning or all at the end. Okay. Put the duck on a roasting pan in the oven at about 400 or 425. You're going to cook this hot and fast to render the fat inside the duck, crisp up the skin, and get a nice brown on the duck so it adds flavor to the gravy later. While it's cooking, make the gravy, which is essentially a vegetable puree here. This is the holy trinity of soups, stews, and braises, the mirepoix. Onion, carrot, and celery. I'm also going with a big old turnip, but you could use any flavorful root vegetable that isn't a potato. Golden beets, daikon, even an apple would work in this. Chop up all the ingredients into similarly sized cubes. No need to be crazy about aesthetics here, just a nice sane chopping job is sufficient proof that you're not a bad person, you're just going through a hard time. For this recipe, I like a ratio of a little more root vegetable to other stuff, especially carrot or golden beet, because the puree comes out a lovely golden color at the end. Get your pan preheated and then drop in a knob or two of butter and let that melt a bit before adding the chopped vegetables. Sprinkle the vegetables with some salt to draw out their moisture and help concentrate the sugars or some shit, and then cook the vegetables until they begin to brown around the edges, stirring frequently to avoid burning. When things are looking brown or threatening to burn, pour in some white wine to deglaze, let the alcohol cook off and the wine reduce for a token amount of time, and then turn off the heat and put on the lid to let the veggies steam and cook the rest of the way. After the vegetables pierce easily with a fork, you can spoon the mixture into a blender and blend until it reaches a puree that's like smooth and stuff, a smooth puree. If the blender struggles, add a little broth or water. When it's smooth, taste it. It should taste good. I mean, why can't you just be happy? The other element that I like to add to this pie, in addition to the roasted duck meat and the vegetable puree gravy, is a little bit of mashed potato at the bottom, which I think adds a little fluffy, starchy vehicle to the meat gravy combo inside the pie. At this point, or any point during the first day of this process, if you want, make a little bit of mashed potato with butter and salt and put it on a plate to chill in the fridge. Okay. When the duck is looking nice and brown, take it out and let it cool sufficiently so that you can cut it up into pieces. Lay the pieces into a pan and pour over your vegetable puree. Cover this and braise the duck in the puree slowly at a low temperature until it's tender, which means you can pry apart the meat easily with a fork. 
Duck can be sort of tough, but this low and slow method after roasting will end up causing the meat to relax and also imbue the veggie puree with all that brown, savory, meaty duck flavor. When the duck is done, put it in the fridge to chill overnight since we're going to be making pie tomorrow by putting chilled ingredients into chilled pastry so things come out flaky instead of mushy. Temperature is super important here when making pie. While the duck is braising, or at any point during day one, make your pastry. Cube up 8 ounces of butter, separate the cubes onto a plate, and put the plate in the freezer while you measure the other ingredients directly into the bowl of your food processor. 12 ounces of flour, a heaping tablespoon of white sugar, and 1 quarter teaspoon of salt. Run the processor a second to blend these things together, and then dump in the cold butter and run the processor again until the butter is broken up into pea-sized bits or smaller. A couple bigger pieces around chickpea sized are okay too. Quickly transfer this mixture to a bowl and blend in just enough ice water to incorporate into a solid mass. Halfway through mixing, start using your hands and incorporate the mass into two separate balls, making sure to get all the dry bits incorporated. Wrap both balls in plastic wrap while you contemplate the ethics of bringing a child into a world gripped by a climate crisis. I mean, we can't just let the stupid people procreate, but what sort of world is she going to grow up in? <sighs> Put the pastry in the refrigerator and go pour yourself a drink because you're done for the day. The next day, pick all the duck meat off the bones and mix in the puree until things look nice and saucy. If you end up with extra gravy, that's fine. It's delicious stuff and I'm sure you're resourceful. Okay, we're finally ready to assemble some pie. Let's talk about vessels for a second. I like little pies best because frankly the presentation is so much nicer when it's self-contained on a plate as opposed to all the ingredients spilling out of a wedge-shaped slice. You don't need fancy mini springform pans like I've got either. This ceramic mini pie dish and this ramekin both came from the thrift store and make perfectly acceptable vessels for pie. You can also just wrap the ingredients in the pastry and make hand pies, which is a fantastic thing to take for a lunch or like a contemplative hike in the woods. Flour a large work surface and roll out the pastry until it reaches about a quarter inch thick. Drape the crust into the vessel. Drape it. Don't press and stretch it, leaving a generous flap on the side for the top crust. If you're working with more than, say, two pies at once, put the crust back in the fridge while you work the rest of the pastry. You've got to keep stuff super cold the whole time. When you're ready, bring out the fillings. First, a bit of mashed potato across the bottom, and then a bit of salt, and then the duck gravy filling. If you want, you can put more gravy on the top if you're feeling extra saucy. Okay. Take the flap and do your best to pinch things together across the top, cutting off a couple excess flaps if you need to. You don't want a huge lump of pastry across the top. You want to aim for an even amount of crust. So don't worry if you end up with something that looks like Buffalo Bill's woman suit. I promise after you brush it with egg and put it in the oven, it'll come out looking rustic, golden, flaky, and delicious. Put the pies on a sheet tray to catch the butter that will drip off while baking. And bake these guys at about 375 until they're golden. In conclusion, 